the today uh, the I will uh, talk about more for the alignment uh, the, the 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 problems uh, in speech recognition. Um, so last time last lecture I we discussed about the feature extraction mainly, even whether it is end to end or it is HMM based approaches. Uh, we are still using the logmail filter bank a feature as a kind of a very efficient uh, the input and so on. But uh, that's still the mostly for the input, right? And actually during the the uh, the, the uh, lecture, uh, we also had a question about you know is that the for the the the, uh, the text uh, the output or is that for the phoneme output as a kind of uh, the the, uh, the final target and so on. And actually, we didn't talk so much about the definition of the output uh, of our problems. So first, I want to uh, introduce that what would be the possible output that we will handle uh, in the speech recognition. Uh, uh, the, we basically uh, shallowly kind of mentioned this part, but uh, just want to clarify this uh, the, the first uh, the, a couple of minutes. So uh, of course, our goal is almost always the text, except for the case that if we want to kind of analyze the, our kind of our, uh, the form patterns and so on for some uh, medical analysis and so on, uh, the, the uh, intermediate representation like a form and so on can be a kind of an output of the target. But the majority of the speech uh, the recognition, uh, the target is to uh, get the text. So that we are uh, basically the, the focusing on the text. And, uh, however, uh, the even text, we actually have a couple of uh, representations. Uh, like, for example, the we have our basically using the three types of the, uh, the uh, representation for the cat for the output the text. One is word. Uh, this uh, would be probably most kind of familiar uh, for people working on the English as uh, a speech recognition. Uh, that is a quite kind of a, uh, the good unit. It has a kind of a, uh, also has a semantic information, synthetic information, uh, and so on. Uh, but the issue is that it tends to be very large. The, the vocabulary size could be uh, the, our natural kind of conversation, uh, vocabulary size would be 30,000 or 40,000. Uh, but depending on the our kind of uh, the, the, the scope of, you know, try to kind of uh, understand everything, the, of course, the vocabulary size becomes uh, the few, super huge. Also, uh, vocabulary means that there are a lot of issues when we have an out of vocabulary. So the, this kind of out of vocabulary issue is also uh, the cannot uh, the ignore. As we have in the, uh, the, uh, the weekly assignment, uh, we often have a lot of kind of new words uh, or kind of named entity and so on which is uh, the often not included in our predefined vocabulary. So uh, this, uh, the, the vocabulary issues are uh, one more the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the drawback of the word-based uh, approaches. And the second approach is character. So this actually is uh, the exactly kind of opposite the, uh, the, the characteristics. So first, character uh, is quite small in terms of the number of the, uh, the vocabulary size, right? Uh, like, for example, in the English cases, it depends on which kind of a character we should include, like a special character and so on. But generally around 30, including the Roman alphabet and so on. So uh, the, this uh, the size is not large in general, but it depends on the languages. Again, uh, like, for example, uh, the Chinese, I think the order of the character in the general use would be the 30,000, uh, so, sorry, 1,000 or 3,000 or something like that, right? But the other entire character set, the, it would have a 10,000 or something, yeah. Uh, same for the Japanese. And depending on the language, some language actually has a large character. But still, uh, compared with the, uh, the vocabulary of the vocabulary size of the world, it is hand, uh, the, the we can handle it. And also, that we would not basically have our uh, the out of vocabulary issues. 
almost all the kind of characters are included in the our uh, pre-existing uh, the, the, uh, the, the dictionary, right? We would not have uh, so much cases that we can create a new characters, except for probably emoji. <laughs> now, <laughs> emoji would become uh, quite popular, uh, and it's may kind of uh, uh, we may need to augment uh, uh, the the character vocabulary with emoji, but emoji usually do not have a corresponding sound. So for speech cases, probably we don't have to include them. Um, however, uh, the it actually has the similar uh, the the uh, pros and cons that are compared with world. So for example, go to is represented by only two words, right? The language is two. But if we uh, the, the ink, uh, the use the character uh, the, to represent this one, uh, the G, O, and the, uh, the space, and the T, O, it becomes uh, the five character, five ranks, right? And generally, uh, the character uh, representation makes the kind of uh, the, the length longer. Length longer means that we need to actually have, uh, the, the, uh, the have uh, more computations. So uh, the, its character is good in terms of the vocabulary size issue, but uh, computationally, it could be very expensive. And then uh, the people are actually using the uh, something between. So this is uh, the called byte pair encoding or sentence piece. Uh, generally, we just kind of uh, merge uh, some of the character set and then making it as a subword. But we, we still, by the way, are uh, the, the keeping the original uh, the, uh, the character as well, so that the, all the kind of uh, the, any of the text can also be represented by this kind of uh, set. So it's including the character. So that's similar to the, uh, the uh, character cases. Uh, we don't have a, a, the out of vocabulary issues. And since some of the word is, some of the word or some of the sub word is still kind of concatenated. So actually the sentence length is again something between. So that the, we can have a, avoid the issue of the very long computation, uh, the uh, very large computation uh, due to the long other uh, character. So uh, the, basically, the, we in this lecture we use these three types of the uh, character. By the way, uh, the how to which which kind of uh, the the, uh, the unit we should use uh, highly depending on the language or highly depending on the other uh, data and so on. Also computational cost and so on. So mostly people actually using the, this uh, the sub word, which is true. But actually for the Chinese Japanese cases, many people actually just using the character. And the word is very uh, the, the useful for the case of the HMM, because word usually have a corresponding uh, the pronunciation. And then that we can connect it with the, uh, the, the, the form-based system and so on. So again, uh, this is quite kind of a different, uh, depending on our kind of cases. So I usually don't specify this uh, the which one I am using, except for the case for the HMM-based approaches versus end-to-end. -end. But anyway, basically, I didn't specify this one, but which means it can be any of them. And if you guys ask the question about, in this case, which one we should use, I'm happy to answer. But it's again depending on the language or depending on the training data, depending on the, uh, the demand of the computational cost, it is changing. So it's actually one of the other uh, parameter, uh, the hyper parameter in uh, if we kind of build a speech recognition system. And this is uh, the more for the, the final output, but we also have uh, several other intermediate the output. So this is phoneme. And the phoneme is that I already explained that a lot in the other the, 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 uh, week before. So I didn't uh, go through so much. But the phoneme is uh, the, the first, you know, the, the, uh, the more acoustic information. And it requires a dictionary to convert from the world. But after uh, the, the, we have a kind of uh, the, uh, the dictionary to convert the phoneme, this problem becomes kind of a shortcut, right? Uh, from waveform to uh, the, the text sequence is very kind of a long uh, in terms of the, uh, the how to kind of change it. But the, this other uh, phoneme is a kind of quite a nice shortcut, uh, a quite uh, the, the nice way to uh, the modularize the problem. 
uh, the, with the kind of acoustic side and the luggage side. So uh, the phoneme is still uh, the widely used in the HM-based system uh, and so on. And then the, the, we also have uh, additional uh, the, the information, which is we call it the state. Uh, that is uh, the more for the, uh, the internal uh, representation, more, uh, the, the more resolutional information uh, than phoneme. But uh, of course, uh, it doesn't mathematically, uh, it's mathematically exist, but it doesn't uh, the, 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 the observable. So it is just a model. But we often also using the other state. Well, I will the later introduce this other hidden Markov model state. But this is more kind of a, a fine a, a, a resolution than the, 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 the phoneme, a, the acoustic part. And this a, the, the representation is a, the often used in the HMM-based system. So a, the, I just want to recap that we have a word character at uh, the white uh, band coding or phoneme or state. This kind of various kind of uh, the output representation uh, we are handling. So that's a kind of remark of the output. Uh, any questions about the uh, output unit? Okay, so cool. And then today, uh, I will uh, the, 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 the explain about alignment. This is also a very important concept. So uh, the first, uh, the I will uh, the discuss about the easy cases. End-to-end -end SR is actually easy in terms of the explaining the, uh, the what it is. Although the, uh, the, the realizing it with the neural network is very complicated. But the, uh, basically, uh, the end-to-end -end SR is easy. So I will start to explain from there this one. So end-to-end -end ASR is the direct mapping uh, from the observation, uh, the, the feature to the speech feature to the text. And without any kind of uh, the intermediate representation, uh, like other phoneme-based uh, approaches. And then uh, the, the, it has a three kind of main uh, architecture, attention-based, uh, the connectionist temporal classification, CTC, and the recurrent neural network uh, transducer, uh, and so on. And today, uh, the, including HMM, I will try to revisit this kind of a method uh, based on the kind of alignment purpose, alignment perspective. So first, the attention-based ASR is actually uh, the, the starting uh, from the same other uh, point to the PW given node. So remember that the, when we kind of starting speech processing formulation in the third week, we always kind of uh, discuss about you know uh, how to kind of obtain this other uh, probability uh, and so on. And the other uh, important issue is that the text or uh, the part uh, it can be word or character or subword, uh, but anyway this the W and the observation the length is different, so we are not sure uh, the which one corresponding to which one uh, the the, the Speech, speech feature corresponding to text and so on in general. So the problem is actually not just kind of uh, recognizing the speech, but actually we want to also find some kind of good the, the, the assignment, alignment uh, problem. And then the, the, how attention-based approach is uh, doing is as follows. First, we actually uh, the factorize PW given O are uh, based on the probabilistic chain rule. So because this W is still very kind of uh, the difficult to deal with because it is sequence. So instead of kind of handling the entire sequence, we uh, the factorize uh, the, this uh, the problem as a kind of uh, the, the uh, product of the each uh, the, the, the word uh, or uh, the each token uh, they do. And then they, the other, uh, uh, the, the converting the problem to uh, this other uh, problem. Uh, that is a kind of a, uh, the, the most uh, the, the, uh, important factorization uh, of uh, the, the attention-based the ASR. And then the, uh, the after we uh, have a probabilistic chain rule to factorize this kind of a, uh, probability, uh, we actually have to uh, the, the providing the actual neural network uh, for this uh, function. And then uh, we often use the attention-based method to align the input and the output. And this one is called the soft alignment. So please uh, remember it. 
by the way, we will have a more deep other uh, discussions about about attention based ASL. So in this lecture, I just want to more focus on the alignment perspective and then other the uh, explain about the each of the kind of method. So if you have a uh, more questions about attention based ASL, that you guys can other uh, ask that the, when I will uh, explain it in the other uh, uh, the later uh, lecture. Okay, so I will try to explain the alignment problems. So first, uh, this is a kind of a other the, the MSCC feature actually, and uh, this is corresponding to the the uh, one two three four five six seven only eight dimension, but it's if you know make it forty and so it's too much. So I only kind of uh, the exciting eight. But the, the, please consider that this is a kind of after the MSCC feature extraction, we have a, this kind of a, uh, the sequence uh, of the audio. So T equal one, two, three, four, five, two. I think this is totally 32 or something like that. So first people understand it. Yeah, this is just a, a, the speech feature from one to 32 corresponding to this kind of MSCC figure. Ah, uh, sorry, 35, yeah. And then uh, the, uh, this is actually the, the word C. And the word C, uh, the, let's say these cases, we just using a uh, character as a unit. And in this case, it's actually uh, the length is three, right? S E E. So the problem here is how to find the, that this S are the corresponding to, uh, each of the feature. This E corresponds to the, the, the Fitch features and the last E corresponding to Fitch feature. So this is a kind of a alignment problem. Uh, the people that understand it, it is clear? Okay, good, good. Yeah, it's uh, some of you, it's a very trivial, but it's very important concept. So I kind of want to spend time. And then what attention-based approach is doing is that actually they try to find the probability of uh, this character uh, that belongs to which feature. So let's say this one is a kind of a probability. Uh, how many percent uh, this S can be possibly aligned? And then in these cases, three or four has a kind of a higher probability than all the others. This means that it's most likely this S will be kind of other aligned here, this three and the four. And then this can be very low probability, but it can be because it is soft. So that's why people call this kind of approach soft alignment. Uh, same other for the E. Uh, Let's say, for example, these cases, there are a little bit more kind of a higher probability in many of the other kind of uh, the, the frames. So uh, the approximately uh, five to, let's say, 20-ish have a higher probability. This means that the most likely this second E would be kind of aligned, uh, aligned with uh, this range of the feature. And then the last one may also have a similar other uh, pattern, but have a more kind of a, uh, the, the, the probability in the last part uh, than the previous features uh, and so on. So uh, this uh, the, the, the is a one way to uh, represent the alignment, right? So again, each kind of a character or each kind of a unit of the output, uh, uh, we try to uh, the get the probability of uh, the, the which one uh, would have uh, aligned to the, uh, the, the feature with some kind of uh, the probability. So this uh, is actually computed in the attention-based uh, approaches. With that, we can actually uh, the compute the, uh, the correspondence of the, uh, the S and the E and the other E uh, and so on. So again, uh, the, this is not deterministic, right? 
this can be 20 or 21 or 22. Even, you know, 1, 2 is not a, uh, the zero probability, almost zero, but it's not zero, completely zero and in the most of the cases. So again, this kind of a, a soft, uh, the, the, uh, the, the softly kind of a, uh, aligning uh, each of the character, uh, uh, that's, uh, we call it the soft uh, alignment. So this is actually the, the, uh, the alignment method that uh, the attention-based approach is. Again. It cannot be same uh, the, the distribution. Uh, and it can be a kind of a, uh, the following. Uh, the, the, that the E can be a little bit earlier, and the second E can be a little bit later. However, uh, uh, the, this is because it is kind of a, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, we have an order, SEE. -E, so it can be actually uh, the, the later. But I see your point. Actually, this can be, you know, just a kind of an E and the long boil uh, the, and so on. So it can be actually the other phoneme representation. It just kind of can be regarded as a one long boil and may not have to have this kind of distinction uh, and so on. But it's just kind of, a, since it is uh, the, this kind of order, and then the attention is uh, trained to see the kind of alignment and so on. So it is not actually, actually we computed, but it's I just kind of virtually do it. But uh, as a computational result, probably it would have this kind of pattern because we have an order in the kind of uh, the, uh, the character side and then uh, the corresponding the, the, uh, the out uh, input should also have an order and so on. However, this is a very important part. So maybe I can have a more kind of discussion in the attention when I kind of explain, but I, maybe I can also uh, mention it right now. This is uh, the, with the kind of training data, uh, we will have this kind of pattern. But one of the issue of the attention-based approach is that this kind of uh, uh, the, the, uh, logic is not uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the represented as a kind of constraint in the, mass, uh, the mathematical form. So this means that, that again, even S can actually be uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the even S can be the, the the have some probability here, but this should not happen, right? In speech, uh, speech recognition is you know almost kind of this kind of a, uh, the representation is kind of a keeping the order. We call this kind of a property monotonic alignment property. So, uh, the, the, so again, you know, it is very kind of obvious that the S should not have a probability here, but attention-based approaches itself doesn't have such kind of a hard the constraint and generally putting some kind of small other probability and so on. So this other nature is actually not very good for speech other recognition, but in the other application like a machine translation and so on, since the order can be different in the input and output. So for them, actually, this is a very good property. But for speech uh, the, the recognition cases, since input and the output should be monotonic, so that uh, this kind of uh, the, uh, the property is not very uh, desired property. OK, so that's a very good question. And then, actually, the, this uh, the connect to the next kind of uh, the, uh, the method, C CTC and RN transducer cases. And it's actually uh, the based on the very different uh, the attention, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the alignment uh, uh, the pattern than the, the previous uh, the, the, uh, the attention-based approaches. So first, uh, the CTC is RN transducer or everything in the speech recognition always starting from PW given O. And again, we so mentioned that W and O is a different range. So we need to find some kind of a, uh, the, uh, the correspondence, right? And then the previously attention-based approaches is more like kind of a soft alignment to uh, sort of this uh, uh, the other issue. But now CTC, RNN, or even uh, the later HMM also actually based on this kind of approaches. We uh, actually uh, have uh, another solution for this uh, the correspondence. It's called a hard alignment path. And this is actually more intuitive, so I can explain about it. So again, that, uh, let's start about this kind of problem. Input the speech features are 35 frames. 
and the token are the, this case is character three. And then last, the, the, in the previous cases, we just try to kind of uh, uh, get the kind of pro, uh, the, uh, the probability of uh, the each assignment. However, in the hard alignment cases, we actually hardly assign uh, like first one to six cases, each are uh, the, the, uh, the, the aligned to S and uh, seven to uh, the, I think around 20, each second E. And the third one uh, would be the rest uh, and so on. I think this is more intuitive for you guys, right? <laughs> However, how to decide this kind of a boundary is actually not trivial or even it is not kind of observable in many cases. So instead of kind of a, a just consider one uh, a case of the alignment, we actually uh, consider the all possible alignment. So in these cases, for example, uh, this is one realization of the alignment. And the next one is a little bit shifted. <laughs> uh, the, the E is kind of a little bit shift, shifted. So that's uh, the, the, uh, the uh, the pattern is also be possibly happens. So we actually consider all possible this kind of uh, the, the alignment. Uh, that is kind of a hard alignment cases. So first hard alignment is to kind of uh, the, uh, making an explicit hard kind of uh, the, the alignment property. Uh, by the way, for this kind of a hard alignment process, we can actually set the monotonic alignment property. So we can, the, in addition to this kind of a loop, uh, the, the hard alignment, uh, we can also set the rule that uh, the, this, once it is happened here, uh, this uh, the S doesn't go to kind of be active here uh, and so on. Hard alignment can actually uh, the, uh, the, the set this kind of other uh, constraint uh, easily and so on. So this is actually another difference with the soft uh, the alignment and so on. But anyway, the, uh, the, the hard alignment is considering the kind of a, a various uh, the, uh, the, uh, the alignment uh, consideration, and then uh, the find the kind of uh, the best ways, or e e even kind of consider everything and the, uh, the in the kind of probabilistic manner. Uh, that is a kind of a hard alignment uh, and so on. Okay, so it sounds like it's a kind of way to for us to kind of represent this kind of representation, right? And how to kind of, uh, but this one is observation, this one is kind of uh, the, uh, the token. Uh, and uh, how to kind of represent this uh, the alignment, hard alignment information mathematically, uh, that is a kind of one question. And then uh, we actually can uh, the, the represent, uh, uh, introduce additional variable called alignment variable. It can be, by the way, changed depending on the kind of a model context. In the kind of a, uh, the, the CTC or RN transducer cases, I may call it alignment variable. But in the HMM-based cases, I may also call it HMM uh, variable and state variable and so on. It's uh, the, depending on the model, uh, the, uh, the, 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 this kind of variable can be called differently. I try to unify it, but if, if not, uh, the, uh, please understand that, uh, the, that I am talking about the same thing. But anyway, uh, how to represent this kind of alignment pattern mathematically? For example, this case is from one to four, it's actually S, and five to nine, it's E, right? And then we have a kind of this uh, the kind of uh, the, uh, the, the variable we prepare z1 corresponding to s, z2 corresponding to s, z3 corresponding to s, z4 corresponding to s, z5 corresponding to e. And then we can actually represent this kind of alignment pattern, right, by introducing this variable. And the same, if you know slightly this alignment is changed, this part is changed, right? <laughs> Did you recognize? Yeah, from here to here, and then uh, the, we can also samely uh, the represent it with the now the different uh, uh, the alignment information. In this case, from the Z seven, uh, it becomes E, but from one to six, uh, it becomes S, right? So by introducing this kind of alignment variable we can actually represent this uh, the, the pattern and this pattern 
uh, mathematically. So this is actually uh, the, the hard arrive, uh, the, the called the, uh, the arrivement uh, variable here, and which we will introduce for the formulation. So this uh, the arrivement uh, uh, variable is actually introduced uh, newly uh, for our kind of uh, formulation. And then uh, CTC and RN transducer is actually uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the formulated. By the way, the, I, I don't do the uh, questions anymore, but if we have a new such kind of a variable uh, to incorporate it to the kind of our PW given law, we use a sum rule. Okay, please also remember that. If we have some kind of a try to introduce some kind of new variables, uh, the how to mathematically doing, we just using the sum rule. And then we can actually uh, the incorporate it the new variable, right? And then uh, the, the later, how to cook it is a different problem. But at least for the, the newly introducing some other parameters, uh, some rule is a kind of way to do that. And then CTC is actually having uh, uh, more equations. And then finally, kind of uh, the, uh, the uh, breakdown to the, the some kind of probability, which I will not fully kind of explain it right now. But in the kind of a later stage, I will uh, the explain about the, the CTC uh, and this more kind of a, uh, the mathematical form of uh, how to uh, derive uh, these uh, the equations uh, the, and so on. But uh, the important part is that the if we introduce this Z, and then if this kind of Z is given, this means that if we have this kind of information, uh, the alignment information is given, at least Z and the observation is the same length. So if it is same length, it is in a correspondence, right? We have a correspondence. So we could use any of the, uh, the, the, the technique, any of the neural network or whatever. We don't need to use attention and so on anymore. So this is actually uh, the, 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 uh, the how CTC is built. After this introduction of the Z, and then we actually can uh, make a kind of any of the neural network to uh, the, the make a, uh, the, the, uh, the speech uh, recognition and so on. Okay, so this is for the end-to-end -end ASR cases. What's happened in the HMM-based uh, speech recognition cases? I will also go through this part. But uh, generally, HMM-based part is actually having a more equation, more math. Uh, because uh, the, it's actually tried to kind of uh, the make the problem to be tractable uh, by using a lot of kind of uh, the assumptions and so on. So for example, this one is already I kind of explained, but since this kind of equation is very important, so I want to kind of uh, review it again. So first part, uh, we just uh, introduced the, uh, the, the phoneme representation, phoneme sequence, and then uh, the sum rule to introduce this one, right? And then we're using the product rule to factorize each of the kind of function. And then uh, the, we have a very good questions, the, you know, the, the, the performing a conditional independence assumption here, but is it really valid? It's not very valid, but it's a kind of an okay assumption. So we often use it. Otherwise this program and this program is equivalent and there is no kind of, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, no kind of a uh, change in terms of the difficulty. But after the conditional independence assumption, it becomes uh, the easier. So this kind of way is uh, the factorization, uh, introduction of the new variable based on the sum rule, factorization based on the product rule, and then simplifying some of the dependency based on the conditional independence assumption. This is uh, what we usually use uh, for our problem. And then uh, the, the, again, it becomes the, uh, the, the acoustic modeling part, lexicon part, and language modeling part that I can, we already uh, explained. But uh, the, now that I will talk about more for the uh, HMM part, which is actually corresponding to the, this the acoustic uh, modeling part. And then I will basically try to provide how this alignment concept is applied to the HMM cases and so on. So uh, the, the uh, HMM uh, the cases, uh, the problem is that a similar 
it's actually, again, we have our, our the speech features all. But uh, pre previously, uh, the, in the end-to-end -end cases, we actually uh, the deal with the token, uh, the, the, the text, right, W. But now it becomes phony. So this is one kind of difference, right? Uh, and then uh, the, in the HMM cases, we also actually using the hard alignment. And in this case, for example, if this, this is the, the two, and in this case, uh, the hard alignment means that the first kind of uh, the phoneme t is uh, the, the aligned to the, uh, let's say, one to five, and the, the other one who, uh, would be kind of aligned to 60, 6 to 18. So this is actually uh, the, the, what we have learned as a hard alignment, which we actually using in the HMM cases as well. But I just want to remark two differences uh, compared with the case that we have explained in the end to end ASR and this kind of HMM based alignment. So first, uh, W, uh, uh, the position of the O is changed, right? Uh, in the end-to-end -end cases, O is actually condition, observation. But uh, HMM cases, O becomes actually the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the argument part uh, of the probability. And this is actually based on one of the, uh, the, uh, the product rule, actually changing the kind of uh, the, the swap the order uh, of the observation part. And then it becomes actually likely. This actually becomes a generation of the speech. But uh, this approach is uh, the, the one of the kind of important uh, the, the, uh, difference with uh, the end-to-end the -end based approaches. And of course, there are another difference, right? Which is the W and the L. But this is more like a, a just using the different unit and so on. So most like most kind of big difference would be a kind of whether uh, O is kind of a condition or argument uh, and so on. But the, I will explain about you know how these kind of difference uh, would kind of uh, the, uh, derive the kind of uh, the use the kind of different uh, formulations and so on. But other than that, the problem is uh, the still uh, the most important problem is still uh, the alignment part uh, and so on. And then given that we have this kind of alignment, uh, by the way, then actually the problem becomes very simple, right? For example, first uh, the five frame corresponding to T and the first uh, the, the six to 18 frame corresponding to U. So the problem before we have an alignment would be that, you know, observation of the one to 18 uh, will be kind of uh, represented as a uh, condition by the uh, two of the other uh, phoneme. Uh, and then actually uh, this uh, the, the is not easy to uh, the, the solve because it's, we need to consider the kind of two variable in the condition and the 18 uh, variable in the other uh, the speech side uh, and so on. However, it is very uh, the if we have this kind of assignment, alignment and so on. By the way, if this is if, and how we kind of get the alignment, I will explain it in the two to three lectures, by the way. It takes very long time to uh, the how to kind of get the alignment and so on. But if we have an alignment, it is very natural to consider that this probability can be factorized, right? From the T to O1 to 5 and the U to 6 to uh, the 18. So once again, similar to the kind of a problem of the what I mentioned in the, 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 uh, the hard alignment CTC RN transducer cases, once we have this kind of phoneme based uh, the, the, the alignment, we can also the, uh, factorize and uh, the simplify uh, this uh, the, 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 the problem easily. However, by the way, uh, this actually derivation is not trivial. So <laughs> from here to here, we actually having a lot of conditional independence assumption. So it's very natural that this, you know, uh, observation one to five corresponding to two T and uh, six to 18 to corresponding to U, right? However, uh, the, still we are not sure really that, you know, uh, that this one is affecting this one and this one affecting to this one, right? So mathematically from here to here is actually not uh, 
uh, the equivalent. Uh, and we actually having using the lot of the conditional independence assumption. From here to here, I use a kind of uh, the, uh, the the compose the sequence. And from here to here, I use a kind of a product rule. Product rule doesn't change the, uh, the difficulty. But given the uh, the assignment, we actually uh, the reasonably uh, the, the, uh, the assume that this part can be kind of uh, the, the ignored. And then we actually can factorize uh, these uh, the two uh, the, uh, two uh, the, 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 the uh, probabilities uh, and so on. So always remember that uh, uh, the some kind of other uh, the two uh, the, the factorize uh, the problem, we actually always have to consider the conditional independence assumption. Otherwise, the problem doesn't become the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the easy. And this is a kind of general case. Again, if we have a, uh, the, the, let's say this, you know, uh, the tj minus one plus one to tj is a kind of a, uh, the, the onset and offset information of this kind of phoneme. And then uh, again, if we know the kind of a given this kind of a, uh, the, uh, the alignment the information, we can actually factorize uh, the, this uh, the problem, but it's actually using a lot of conditional independence assumption to uh, the derive this one. Okay, so uh, the, this is the, uh, the last uh, the, the explanation part today. So um, I mentioned that the, the, I will use the kind of uh, the phoneme and then uh, the making it as a um, uh, alignment problem. But actually, this is a very simplified explanation. Uh, we usually introduce the two silence, silence begin and the silence end, uh, because the edge of this part is most likely silence. And it is wrong to assign silence part to the, uh, the phoneme. So we actually usually kind of introduce this kind of silence B and the silence E uh, and so on. By the way, the, this uh, the, the sum of the system uh, the dis uh, the make a distinction of the silence beginning and the silence end. The sum of the system regarding both are the same silence uh, and so on, but it depends on the system. It doesn't have a big difference. But uh, this uh, representation may not be enough. It's actually uh, the T and the U can actually be, may have a more kind of a changes. Uh, for example, if we uh, the, the pronounce it U uh, and so on, uh, before, uh, in the kind of beginning of the pronunciation and the end of the pronunciation can be more uh, the, 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 uh, the less stationary, but the middle of the pronunciation can be very stationary. So based on this kind of uh, the assumption, in the, uh, the hidden Markov model cases, we actually even uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, split the unit to the one, uh, the U, one, uh, the, the two, three, uh, and so on. So this uh, the, the, the concept uh, is actually quite good to modeling the, uh, the, the speech that used to be. So the, uh, the, the problem of the HMM-based uh, the system uh, to uh, the make an alignment is actually a little bit more complicated than the, uh, the, the CTC or other cases. Again, we have a silent symbol, and we also have our uh, T and U, but it can be actually uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, represented as the three types of the, uh, the uh, phoneme. And then uh, the, we try to kind of find the alignment problem. Once we get the alignment, uh, we can actually uh, the, the model it. Uh, the other uh, the, the, a lot of mathematical uh, tools and so on. But again, the, uh, this kind of a, uh, the, uh, alignment is not unique. We don't know the answer. We cannot actually have an answer. So we always have to consider this other kind of, a, this realization of the alignment is actually probability. This one can be like, for example, 30% and this, can, this one can be 10% and so on. Always we consider this kind of alignment as a probability and then uh, the solving these approaches. Actually for this, the, the hidden Markov model uh, is uh, the very important uh, tools uh, to do that.
Okay, so this is the kind of uh, the, the summary of today's uh, the, uh, uh, the lecture. So first, uh, the, I kind of uh, try to uh, they, they, um, provide the information, important information. Input and output are different. And then uh, we need some alignment. And uh, for the soft alignment case, I already uh, I introduced part, which is based on the attention based uh, the approaches. But the majority of the method is actually hard alignment uh, based approaches, which is used for the CTC, RNN transducer, and the HM based uh, the approaches and so on. So that's the, the today's uh, the, the lecture. 